Book five, number four, country dance. Time signature, three, four. Key signature, D major. That means watch out for the C sharps. F sharps, bog standard, very easy. C sharps, fine. But people always forget them when they're on the G string. Oh yeah, that high third finger or low fourth finger, however you want to play them. Generally in country dance, they're going to be playing a extended third finger unless you're in a different position. So this is one of those pieces where you need to be thinking about the pitch rather than your hand, or you need to be thinking about the relationship of semitones and tones rather than high two, low two. And that's why we start talking about semitones and tones back in book one, so that we mark a semitone in the music and you straight away just put your fingers close together. We mark a tone in the music and you think, oh yeah, that's a whole step, cool. If you're not in the habit of marking tones and semitones in your music, I strongly encourage you to do that in this piece. But before you do, get your book one out, go through etude and do that in there because it's just practice. Name the note, name the next note, establish the relationship, mark the interval. So it, when we play etude and we play Name every note in that scale, establish the relationship between them, mark in the relationship, whether it's a semitone or a tone, and then play it and try not to think about which finger you're using. Just try and think about the next finger being a tone or a semitone away. And that's going to build really nice infrastructure for country dance. Now, there's a good thing to be practicing in country dance before you tackle the whole piece. There's several good things. The thing I think is the most important is the shift in the end of bar 12 from third position to fifth position. We've done this before, but this is quite exposed and it's high and squeaky and you really got to get it right. So the notes that we're playing, an A, a C sharp, and then the fourth finger. What are you, what's that? Oh, it's an F sharp, holy smoke. I have several tricks for this stuff. One is to just name the notes and then play them comfortably in first position somewhere else in the violin. So an A, a C sharp, and an F sharp. And then my brain knows what I'm actually aiming to play. The C sharp isn't written in the music as a note. It's in there, in my copy anyway, which is the revised edition. It's in there as a bracketed note, which means that our finger plays it, but the bow doesn't play it. So you shift up to it. You put the first finger on the C sharp, but you don't actually sound it. And then you drop the fourth finger on. And hopefully you've practiced it so many times that you can't get it wrong and magic happens. So here's the drill. One, then three. Ready, go. Again. Now eyeball that third finger. Here's the sneaky trick. Put your index finger right there beside it to roadblock it and move the first finger there. That's the new spot. That's where third finger just was. So here's my trick again, playing A, playing the C sharp. Ugh. Roadblock it, move the first finger to that spot. Make sure you take your thumb as well. Once you're comfortable about how that feels and you're like, mm, this is really fine. Three, one. And then you can drop the phone. Now, there is of course a catch. There's always a catch. When we move from third to fifth position, the thumb doesn't just move up the side of the fingerboard, it comes around and underneath. And we've talked about this back in the start of book five already, playing the Vivaldi, the, the number two. But I think here, because it's really fast and it's really exposed, it feels different somehow. So take a look at my thumb, just to really confirm this idea of coming around the violin. Third position. And I'm actually moving with my arm. Okay, I'm not just moving with my hand, I'm moving my arm so that my thumb comes 
around the neck of the violin. If I don't do that, the fourth finger is going to be wrong. You can probably get the first finger to the C sharp. But there's no way you can get the fourth finger in tune. So one, three. One, arm around. Yep, do it again. And really do move your actual arm and your actual elbow. Hoik. Yeah. Oh, my bad habit of wearing black on black. Okay, again. Hoik. Yes. Sorry, I moved high that time. I was pitchy. When I look down here, I can see the corner of my elbow without moving my head from its posture up on top of my violin. Just with my eyeballs, I can see the tip of my elbow. If I can't, I'm not going to get my fourth finger in tune. If I can, I'm really well set up. So again, this is a spot where your posture that we've been, you know, setting up and since busy, busy, stop, stop, is really vital. So when you practice that, you know, 400 times, your new thing one one four four one 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 four four one one do it now with me five times okay ready set go move your arm don't forget arm thumb comes around i lost count one more I don't know if that was five or six. Doesn't probably matter. Do that every day for 20 days. You've clocked up 100 good repetitions. Do it 10 times a day for 20 days. You've got 200 good repetitions. You can do the maths. Now, once we've gotten up to that top note, we've got to get back. So I'm leaving my first finger on, the one that doesn't actually sound. That's the other reason we're putting it on the C sharp. The new thing to practice. You can see the semitone relationship between my C sharp and my D natural. And the more you have your arm rotated around the violin, the easier it is to have perpendicular posture where your fingers drop onto the strings and you don't have to stress about intonation. Again. One more time. Now, we never actually play the first finger. It just sits there like a bookmark. We shift back and we put third finger back into that C sharp. So, now we have our new idea. Put the third finger in first finger spot. Good. Now, if you're finding that your shift up is still not right, go back to this, one, three, one, one. If you want to press pause here and practice that 50 times, be my guest. Then we want the one, one, four. Don't forget your notes. We're playing an A, then a C sharp, then the F sharp. Okay, if you get lost, play them an octave lower. Drop the three, drop the two right beside the one. There's my uh, semitone shift. Cool. Easy. Let's do it one more time for good luck. Yeah, one more time. Super. Now, bowing. Hmm. Bowing? No, what we should do first is get rid of the ghost note, right? So now we just articulate it with the finger, but we don't let the bow sound it. So it's shift. Let's do that again. So the bow just stops and only the left hand plays the C sharp. And it really does stay in touch with the fingerboard the whole time. I'm not lying to you, it stays on. I'll show you again. Okay, so it doesn't lift off. 
it stays there. If you lift it off, you're going to get into trouble with your intonation and it's going to screw you up in the next book and the book after that and the book after that and Mozart Rondo and Mozart A major and Mozart D major and it's a crappy habit, so don't do it, okay? Put the infrastructure in now and it's, it's like um, compound interest, okay? You get it right here. It keeps paying you interest for the rest of your life. It makes so much other stuff easy for you. Again, don't play the C sharp. Just stop your bow and make only the index finger play it. Got it? If not, you can press pause and you can practice it 800 times. Or you can stop the video altogether, bail out here, come back tomorrow and do the next idea. Okay, let's try putting in the bar before. So we have... Oh, all that stuff. Ready? Go. Up, 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 up. Shift. Put four on. Again, third position. Shift up. Put the four on. Okay. Now let's keep going on to the mordant bar. you've done the most difficult thing in the whole piece. So, let's go back to the start. We can already do all this business, right? Yeah, that should be a piece of cake by now. If not, go back to book two. thing to practice if it's not happening easily for you. From the beginning, one, two, slow. Commit to that note, C sharp. Oh, not sorry, I should have addressed that. There's a choice there on the A in bar seven, whether you play first finger or I like the harmonic just for a bit of tone color and because it's a rustic country dance so let's lean towards that um, flamboyant style a little bit but if you want to stick with the security of totally fine okay again from the beginning one two one you've got a longer scale make sure that you shift nicely on your open D in bar 23 shift and you may have to train that first finger to find the C sharp accurately it's not a regular third position it's that little bit of an augmented shift if you're having trouble with it play it in first position to train your ear for the note that it's trying to find Okay, now the next part can be a little bit loopy. It feels like humoresque. It's worth taking it in separate bows and getting the shifting to be really clean and clear. I play the uh, upstairs shifting, so I start it in third position with the harmonic. Oh, that's the downstairs shifting, sorry, underneath the notes. First position. Second. First. Augmented third. Repeat. Second. Third. It's not too difficult. Maybe the trickiest thing is getting the bowing to sit nicely. This feeling of down, up, up, down, up. Wait, that's just like. 
like mini by one. Oh, not actually so hard then with the bottom. Maybe it's just rolling all the bits together. Let's do it again slowly. Ready, and. Second, stay there, stay there. First, third, first. Second, first, third. Good, let's do it again. Ready, and. Find the F sharp. Okay, play this really stopped staccato. Let's go again from thirty-four. Hmm. Make sure the bow stops. Stop. And I don't want to hear your finger move. So make sure the bow solidly stopped. Stop. Stop. Yes, then you cross and shift at the same time. Shift. I think the nastiest thing in here is making sure your grace notes line up properly. So, especially with the third finger, get the third finger back on. Often I hear this. Mm -mm. That's a modern. It should be. So making sure that the grace note finger is on before the bow releases the sound is integral to playing that nicely. Let's go again from the upbeat to 33. One, two. Second. First. Repeat it. Oh, we know this part. and set the bow on the string. Okay, so I feel like there are little parts in this piece that need drilling, like the really careful shifting and maybe the stopping bow that really lines up with the notes well, but it's not difficult, okay? It's dessert. After that huge Vivaldi G minor, this is the reward. This piece and German dance are like, woo, party pieces. Uh, then you have a little bit of hard work in Veracini Chic. I've broken all that down for you, it's okay. And then we hit the Bach Double. So this is a really good time to make sure that your book for Bach Double is fantastic, like under your fingers, at tempo, can play it as part of the duet, easy, because then it's going to be very, very simple and easy for you to learn the first violin part because they're so similar. So while you're learning country dance, Revise your Bach double heavily. If you haven't already made it fluent and awesome, polish it because this is where you want it to be great and build the foundations for the next idea. Let's say country dance at tempo. If you need to put your violin down and listen, then do that. If you want to play along, do that. I'll still play a little slower than the CD because if you want to play it at CD tempo, go play it with the CD. One, two, three. <laughs> 